Hey guys, welcome back. Giff here again today. From the late 80s until now, I've pretty much seen it all come and go from $20 headphones to pretty nice gear that I have right now. I'm going to take you through the three main ways currently to control your audio, whether you're on one PC, a two PC setup, or a console and a PC setup. We'll take a look at the voice meter software. Then we'll go ahead and check out the Scarlet line from Focusrite. And finally, we'll discuss how mixers and maybe something like a Go XLR would make your life a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and get into it. Guys, if you enjoy hearing about PC gaming hardware and tech, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can find your way back for the next video. Throughout most of the 90s, I was using a headphone and mic combo very similar to what you're seeing here. At that point in time, you really only had two things you were trying to manage, and you had the in-game sound, and you had on some games the chat that was mostly us just screaming at each other because although we didn't know it at the time, our gear wasn't that great for what we were trying to accomplish and internet speeds were certainly not what they are now. Why do I bring up the literally long ago days of the 90s and how we were PC gaming then? Well, because there's a lot of people out there these days that despite the big growth of streaming, recording, VODs, things like that, they're still just playing games on a single PC. They've got the game and then they've got their gear and they're just playing. They're not actually trying to record, stream, or edit anything along the process. However, what's become much more complicated, even when you only have a single PC setup, is managing audio. Just to expound on that a little bit, what I mean by Audio getting more complex is, of course, you have Discord these days because the vast majority of us talk to our friends online when we're gaming via Discord. Then a lot of us also like to listen to music if the game we're playing is not too intense or audio driven. So there you have several things that you have to balance. Number one, you have the game audio itself. Number two, you, of course, have Discord. And then number three, you have any outside audio things like maybe a VOD that's playing on the side or a music source. These days, the gear is certainly a lot nicer than what I started out with. However, you can get a lot of headphone mic combo for less than $100. But I want to cover a couple of kinds of connections here real quick just to make sure we're on the same page. Hopefully most of you are already aware that if you're running separate mic and headphones, that you'll have one 3.5 for the headphone and one 3.5 mil connection for the mic. And those will plug into different connections either in the back of the motherboard or somewhere in the top or front of your case usually. You may have headphones that have a single TRRS connection. That means tip, ring, ring, sleeve. And that means you have one 3.5 mil jack carrying both the audio and the vocal qualities of what you're hearing and speaking. You will need a splitter to break out those two signals before you plug it into the PC, one for the headphone, one for the mic. The other option for connection is going to be some kind of wireless. Now what you see here, the HyperX Cloud Flight, they have a dongle for USB, which makes life really easy. Whether it's wired or wireless, if you have a headphone mic combo that has a USB connection, it does make life just a little bit easier for managing the signals back and forth. I just wanted to set the stage there with the different kinds of connections, so we move into different kinds of mic and headphones later that we understand what the differences are. I've run into literally hundreds of people over the years that are familiar with the name voice meter, but they don't know exactly what the software does or how they're going to use it. Today isn't necessarily going to be a full setup video for any of the things I'm talking about. However, if you want me to do that in the future, let me know down in the comments below. But today I want to give you an idea of, in my opinion, when I think you use the appropriate tool for your setup. So I use voice meter in different formats for a number of years, and it is very good software, especially for the price. Guys, keep in mind, it's donorware, not free software. So go ahead and throw those guys a few bucks for creating a pretty good software that works in most situations on PC. Sometimes folks get a little overwhelmed the first time they go ahead and open one of the voice meter software suites. And it's easiest if you think about this in three sections and then go ahead and apply it to your audio needs. On the left here, what you have are the hardware inputs for voice meter. The most common thing that all of us are going to have is a mic. And that can be whether it's a 3.5 mil mic that's plugged in or a USB mic. You're going to have to go ahead and declare the mic usually right here. You click on that input source and you're going to see an option there for the mic. You're going to go ahead and toggle that. And then you can right click and name this, you know, onboard mic or USB mic or HyperX mic or whatever you want to call the mic. And you can also have inputs for other hardware devices, as you can see here. In the middle section of the control panel, what you see are the virtual inputs. That is usually going to mean your PC and or game sounds that you're listening to. However, the nice thing you can also do here is have a second and a third set 
of virtual or PC inputs. So maybe you want to mix your game sound with some music a little bit differently. This will let you control those audio levels. Then the third section we have on voice meter is the hardware out or the outbound mix to what things are going to sound like. This will definitely be your headphones or however you're listening to the mix. But if you're streaming off a single PC setup, this is also where you would control what the stream hears. Like I said, guys, this is not an all-inclusive setup video. You could talk literally all day about the different options inside of voice meter. However, that's the basics. And I have found using it in a multitude of different scenarios that voice meter runs really well on a single PC setup. Once you start going into involving a console or a second PC, you start to run into some limitations. So we'll get back to how you mix multiple physical machines, you know, your PC and your PC or your PC and your console in section three of this, which will be timestamped down below. What we'll talk about here in the second section is you want to move into some different mics. You want to go into the XLR world. You need an audio interface for that. And USB mics have come a long way, especially in the last few years. Their audio quality is getting pretty good. XLR can sometimes give you a little bit more control and sometimes a little bit more cleaner sounding signal. Let's go ahead and look at how you would control an XLR mic now. This is certainly not the only brand, but I feel like a lot of us when we hear audio interface, we think about the Focusrite Scarlett line of audio interfaces. Focusrite is probably the brand that's heard of the most. However, I'll go ahead and share some of the more common, better reviewed audio interfaces in the description below, because there's certainly a ton of choices out there. With the quality increases in the last few years, I'm not sure if graduated is exactly the right word. When you go from a headphone mic or a USB mic, to an XLR mic, that's kind of how I felt because I felt like I had more control over the mic itself. However, as most of us know, when you have an XLR mic, and I'll go ahead and lay over some pictures here so you can see what I'm talking about, you need a way to turn that analog signal into something digital for your computer to understand. And that's where the audio interface comes in. What you're looking at here is my old Focusrite Scarlett Gen 2 2i2 audio interface. And I use this for quite a while. This same audio interface is still serving with my son's PC setup now as I have a dual PC setup and moved on to a mixer. Installation couldn't be any easier. It runs on bus power, so you're just going to plug it in via USB to the back of the PC, both to power it and to send the signal back and forth. In the front of the unit, you have the XLR port itself, in this case two of them, to go ahead and plug in your XLR mic and you have your audio out for your headphones. Speaking for myself, of course, I had zero issues with my Focusrite Scarlett audio interface. That's why my son's still using it with his PC, and he didn't have any issues with it at all now. The only drawback you're gonna have with all the audio interfaces that I'm aware of is they don't mix sound. And once you add in either a console or a second PC to game on, then you are up against it. You've got to find some way to mix the sound. Speaking exclusively to PC to PC folks right now, you do obviously have some options out there that are not a mixer. You could go with OBS and use an NDI plugin, or you could continue with voice meter and use their V-band technology and have the PCs talk to each other via your local network. Guys, when I talk about using NDI with OBS or V-band with voice meter, I literally speak from experience. The big gremlin in all this is, of course, the latency. As we all know, once you have an analog signal that converts to digital, then hits your local network, gets routed back to the other PC, and then it's going to hit some kind of recording software like OBS, there's going to be some latency that you're going to have to then match up the audio and your video signal. To me, it was a little bit surprising how often I have to go back and reset the latency on the PC that was doing the recording. Sometimes updates would come along and throw that all out of whack. Sometimes also your network was just having heavy traffic and the video and audio just weren't lining up the way you wanted to. Of course, you could adjust that in post. However, if you were streaming it, you'd have to go in there and fix that in real time to make sure your signal that was going outbound actually matched. This was the point in time I was trying to be more serious about my production levels, and I was also growing frustrated using the network to bounce my audio around and continuously having to adjust the software to make sure everything made it up in the end. My first attempted solution was a nice Allen and Heath mixer. For going PC to PC, it certainly had all the connections I needed, including ports for multiple XLR mics if you needed to go that way. Obviously, it had headphone out, and you could connect your gaming PC via USB, and you could connect your streaming PC using quarter-inch audio in, audio out jacks. So some of the issues to think about here, first of all, console guys, if you're going to go console and then have it captured on a PC, which is the normal way to do it, you really got to think about what you're going to grab. And you might want to look at the other option we have here in a minute because there aren't that many true mixing boards out there that you can go ahead and plug a Toslink cable into. 
and that's what the modern consoles have for strictly audio out. So if you're gaming on a new Xbox or a PlayStation 5, and you want to use a mixer of some kind to get your XLR mic, to put your audio out to you on your headphones, and also capture the audio from your console, you're going to need to make sure it can take an optical cable that's coming from the console to the mixer. The other two problems that I personally had is for whatever reason, this mixer, whenever I turned on my capture card, created a horrible grounding loop and the screech was pretty bad. So I went ahead and got some ground loop isolators and they made it a lot less, but it was still not what I would call a clean signal whenever I had both the mixer in use and the capture card also going at the same time. The other problem I ran into sometimes is I was still had to go into actual apps to make small changes in volume. And I found this really frustrating. What I ended up doing was go ahead and put voice meter back on the PCs. And that way I could make adjustments through voice meter instead of having to go into the actual apps. That got to be frustrating very quickly because I found that I was tweaking the audio sometime on the mixing board, sometime in voice meter and sometime in the apps. And I realized that was not really a long-term solution to what I was trying to accomplish. Like so many other content creators and streamers before me, I went back to look at the obvious choice, the Go XLR. Now this was getting towards the end of 2020 and prices were starting to come back down to their original MSRP of about $500. And Amazon actually had them in stock leading up to the holidays. Realistically, I know guys, 500 bucks is a lot of money to pay for a mixer. However, the Go XLR Mini is going to be returning back to stock on Amazon again soon. And you get 95% of the functionality for half the price with the Go XLR Mini when compared to the Big Brother. Whether it's the full-size model or the Mini, to me, there's two reasons to make these things worth the money when you compare them to either a software solution over a local network or a traditional mixer. When you look at the ports available on the full-size model or the Mini, you can connect everything that you're going to need, whether you're a content creator or a streamer to make your life just a little bit easier. The second reason I really feel like this solution is worth the money when you're talking about a console and a PC or two PCs is this page right here. The combination of mixing and routing all done in one software suite with one piece of hardware. The routing table by itself is almost worth the price of admission. Anybody that's messed around with trying to route multiple audio sources knows what a pain in the rear end it can be. The other side of this is having one device that mixes your output signal. That is really an awesome thing to have when you're trying to create content or stream instead of having to go into individual apps or to the individual machine itself and mess with your settings there. This way you can control everything from one box when you're midstream. Like I mentioned before, this is certainly not an all-inclusive video of setup or how to use each and every one of these products. I just want to touch on the different scenarios and what my opinion was on the best solution to fix your audio and have it sound good to you and the people that might be consuming your content or watching your stream. At this point, I've spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours messing around with PC and console gaming audio. So if you have questions, please let me know down in the comments below. If there seems to be like enough demand to do a how-to and a setup on any of these, I'd be happy to do it. But those videos do take a lot of work, so I want to know that somebody's actually going to watch them at the end of the day. Sound off down there in the comments, guys. I know a lot of you guys are probably creating content or streaming. What are you using to capture your Discord, your game audio, your chat audio? You know, how are you blending it all together so it sounds good to you? And then also when it comes out to the internet, I know this kind of video is a little bit different than my normal news updates and things like that with NVIDIA, graphics cards, CPUs. But if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And if you want to find your way back, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, good hunting, GIF out.